Praise the Lord. This is this is Pastor Paul Kimball from Trim the Lamps Ministry. I've been uh, starting to look at the Old Testament men, the Old Testament women, uh, at who they were and what they did, um, and how that speaks into our life. We cannot look at these just as history. Uh, we can't look at these just as uh, a good story. All of these things, the scripture says, are set forth as our examples upon whom the end of the worlds have come. It's all come upon us. We have to do this thing right. We have to we have to walk right, we have to believe right, we have to do this thing right. Um, and we gain strength and we gain wisdom and insight from these men, from these examples that are set forth in Scripture. All right? We looked at Abraham, we looked at Isaac and Jacob. This week I would like to look at Esau. Esau. It's not your choice, really, to model your life after. I want to look at him because Scripture says that he's a type of our carnality. He's a type of a behavior, and a, a adulterous heart, if you would, that desires this world and rejects the thing that God has, has set forth doesn't esteem what God has set forth. I want to I want to show that this is literally the position of scripture, okay? That Esau speaks to our carnality, uh, Esau to to really see what God feels about Esau and 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 what his judgments would be concerning Esau. Um, we have to also make the link that Esau is Edom because many times God utters his judgments over a people called Edom not Esau okay but God isn't just worried about one man he's he's concerned that Esau would be in the hearts of men the same uh, casual approach the same lightly esteeming would be found in our hearts that's what he's concerned about. So that's how this applies to you and I. Okay. In scripture in Genesis 25, 30. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. A little bit later in Genesis, it says, it's, it's, given the uh, the lineage of, of Esau and Duke Magdil, Duke Iram, these be the Dukes of Edom. According to their habitations and the land of their possession, he is Esau, father of the Edomites. And we see his character. We see, we see how he lightly esteemed the birthright that was his. It was his birthright. It was given to him. He was the firstborn. But he lightly esteemed it. He so lightly esteemed it that he let it go for really a bowl of porridge, a bowl of soup, a bowl of stew. Just a very momentary satisfying of his natural man. He, he let this thing go. He gave it up. This is the hallmark of Esau. He despised it. And we'll look at the scripture that speaks directly to that. But, so we see that. We see that he has become the father of a people that are called the Edomites, okay? Now in Hebrews 12, 16 through 17, 
uh, he brings it home. Uh, the, the writer of Hebrews brings it home to you and I. He's saying, watch over yourself. Look diligently, he said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. So in scripture, Esau's behavior is considered profane. It's considered abominable. It's considered really a place of fornication outside of covenant. Despising covenant. For one morsel of meat, it says, sold his birthright. Here's the consequence. For you know that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. This behavior of Esau was offensive to God. It was offensive. Now he, in this scripture, the behavior of Esau is compared to uh, a place of fulfilling our flesh, a place of fornication, not, not a sexual position, but a position of the heart, a position that doesn't esteem what God has offered as significant or worth suffering hardship or worth suffering loss or worth resisting temptation. It's not worth that. I'm just going to go ahead and do what I want to do. Well, the scripture says that that's Esau in the heart and we all have that. That's our basic nature is to live our life and do what we want to do. That's, that's who we are as man. But salvation comes and something else is in the midst of us working. And it's really a love and a desire to serve and to please God and to walk with Him and to know Him. And that's um, something that's fermenting in the side of all of those that are born again. But if we choose to push that away and just walk after the flesh, the scripture says in many places, it says, Know ye not that the flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Esau does not have a place of receiving the, 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 the benefit, the blessing that goes with the birthright. He lost it. He gave it up. You and I can actually give up the blessing and the birthright that has come to us in Christ Jesus. We can give that thing up by following after the desires of our heart. It's like one choice at a time, giving up the birthright. This is not separate from God. God is looking at these things in all of us. He, if, he, if he sees Esau in the midst of us, you understand that God sees that thing. He's literally spoken that to, to me personally and also to a pastor that I was under. He's spoken that. I see Esau in the heart. What he's saying is I see, I see a lack of esteem for what I've offered. I see a lack of pursuit for what I've offered. A lack of desire, a lack of hunger. I see that thing. You're choosing your own life rather than my life. I see that thing. The scripture says that if you don't hate your father, sister, mother, brother, he said, you're not worthy of me. He said again, you can't be my disciple. It's this type of thing. If, if the order if our focus, if our primary place is this birthright that is in Christ, I must inherit this. Paul said, I suffer the loss of all things and count them but done that I might win 
So we must win at all costs. We must take hold of what has been offered. This is esteeming the birthright. If that drive, if that focus, if that bent is not in the midst of us, if we're happy to serve our own life and pursue our own life, that's Esau. That's why he's in the scripture. It's not acceptable. Not only is it not acceptable, read some of the words that the Lord speaks concerning Edom. All those that really come forth with the same character as Esau. All right? In Malachi, he said, was, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. The people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. I mean, God is actively choosing sides between Esau and Jacob. Isaiah 34, 4 through 6. All the host of heaven shall be dissolved. The heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. All their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falls from off the vine and as a falling fig from the tree. So my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia, which is another scriptural name for the land of the Edomites. It shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. He's talking, now God is talking here about a time of recompense. He's talking about, first he's saying, okay, there's going to be some things take place in heaven. In Revelations, it says that Satan was cast down. There was war, he was cast down and had no more place in heaven. He was cast down. There's going to be war in heaven. But then he says, I'm going to put my sword upon the land of Edomia. So, if judgment begin, begin first in the household of faith, he's not first going to the world with judgment. First he comes to his people. And in his people, he's first going to address this land of Edomia. This land of Esau, the Edomites, that's where he looks first. I have given you. What have you done? He has expectation. His life is so great. This is, again, this is not by law. This is not by commandment. He knows that the, 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 the grace, the glory, the strength is so great in his life. That when he gives that, it's like, I saw a dream once, I was walking through the desert, and every place where my foot hit the sand, it was barren sand, every place, grass would grow up, grass would grow up. That's what God knows. He knows that with him all things are possible. He knows that he can change, and he can heal, and he can deliver anybody. He knows this thing. So when he gives the gift of Jesus Christ into our life, he comes back and he says, okay, what you got? His expectation, his desire, he wants fruit, he wants increase. He wants to see himself. If he comes back knowing the, the greatness of his own life that, that he gave, and he sees carnality, if he sees wickedness in our heart, and just desire to walk like men and carry the banner of Jesus Christ, he's angry. He says, that cannot happen. My son, the, the, the price that he paid is that great. I insist that this thing be done and that it manifest the greatness of what was done. Carnality is not acceptable. Ezekiel 32.29 There is Edom, her kings, her priests with all their might. 
are laid by them that are slayed by the sword, they shall lie with the uncircumcised, the sinners. The carnal Christians shall lie by the sinners. Their judgment is the same. And with them that go down to the pit. Jeremiah. Lo, I begin to bring evil upon the city which is called by my name. And shall you be utterly unpunished? He's talking about, he, he, I don't have it here, but he was talking to the, the Edomites. Shall you be unpunished? No. There is requirement upon all of God's people for the same thing that I've spoken. What have you done with my son Jesus? Carnal Christians? No. There is recompense. It says in Thessalonians that we are not appointed unto wrath. We like to stop there, but... I'm telling you, the scripture is more involved than that. Jeremiah 49 says, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. And again, speaking to Edom, And are you he that shall altogether, shall altogether go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall surely drink of it. He's talking about this cup of recompense, this cup of wrath, this cup of payback. I just read some scripture. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goes by it shall be astonished and hiss at all the plagues thereof. James, talking about this place of fornication. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Romans, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, just like Esau did. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. This is the position of Esau. This is the manifestation of his character. It was carnal. And God says, that's not acceptable for my people. That's why Esau is in the scripture. He's a warning. He's a graphic warning. Not to a few, but to every last one of us. We all have a place of carnality. That's who we are. And then here comes the Spirit of God and the potential that's in Jesus Christ. And he would cause us to be changed into another creature. To put on Christ. Those that walk in the Spirit will not fulfill the law of the flesh. They'll not fulfill Esau. Walk in the Spirit. That's why Esau is in the, is in the Word of God. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that you're helped by this. Uh, this is not meant to incriminate, but all of the people, all of the activities, the whole account of the Word of God is to help us, to help you and I, upon whom the ends of the world have come. We have got to get this right. Be blessed. Be strengthened. If you have any questions, if you want to speak about this at all, call me. Uh, email me. I am delighted to, to respond and Get back with you. Be blessed. In Jesus' name.